10 most common mistakes that people make when they're using Zoom platform. My hope is that you will take away some of the tips and tricks that can help you avoid those mistakes and make your Zoom experience more pleasant. The first mistake has to do with sharing your screen and not necessarily knowing the difference between sharing your entire desktop or sharing a specific app. Let me demonstrate what I mean. What I see most often is people click on share the screen and they share their entire desktop. When you do share your entire desktop, participants will see everything that is happening on your desktop. When you move from uh, one application to another, they will see that as well. Another important difference between sharing your desktop and specific application or a window is that as a, a host, when you share a specific app, you can jump back and forth between different applications and your audience will not see that. For example, if I'm a teacher and just want to show a presentation for my students, I'll go to share the screen and then select this presentation. I'll click share. If as a teacher I decide to move to another window, you'll notice that students will still be seeing the presentation that I'm sharing with them and not what is actually on my screen. In fact, what is happening now, my sharing is effectively paused, as you can see right here, because I've exited the screen or the application that I'm sharing. Sharing. Finally, some people don't even have an option to share the entire desktop, something that we'll have a look a little bit later in this tutorial. The second most common mistake is people forgetting sharing their computer audio when they are sharing a video clip with their audience. What ends up happening is your students or audience can see the video clip, but they cannot hear the sound. So it's super important that if you decide to share a video with your audience, make sure that you share your computer sound. And ideally, you also need to be clicking optimize screen sharing for video clip, which in effect downgrade the quality of the video being shared to accommodate the internet speed, the latency and provide better user experience. If in the middle of the presentation I realize that I don't actually remember whether I share the computer audio or not, you can simply do that by moving your cursor all the way up to see meeting controls. From here, you've got to make sure that the share computer sound is ticked on. You can also click on more and optimize screen share for video clips. So now if I share a video clip with my audience, they will hear the sound loudly and clearly. Mistake number three has to do with letting other people share their screens. What I see most of the time is when someone's asked for permission to share, people make them co-host. They navigate to participants and then they make a person co-host so that they can share the screen. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to make people co-host so that they can start sharing the screen. You can simply enable everyone to share their screen by either clicking on security and allow participants to share their screen like this, or simply clicking on this arrow key and going to advanced options and allow all participants to share their screen. Another mistake most beginners make is that not realizing that lots of Zoom settings are actually set up outside the Zoom application. In other words, you need to actually go to the Zoom website to set up the way your Zoom functions. Let me demonstrate an example. In this Zoom meeting, I don't have a chat function. As a beginner Zoom user, I'll probably try to find how to turn on chat in the meeting. But in fact, most of the settings for the Zoom I actually access through the Zoom website, which is zoom.us. You need to log in into your account. I'm already logged in, so I just see my account. Go to my account and click on settings. This is the place where you can set up every single option of how the Zoom works. Remember at the beginning I mentioned that some people cannot share the entire screen because this option has not been enabled. And this is exactly the place where you turn it back on. Simply go to settings right here, desktop screen share for users. So this option has been turned off. Now it's on. And when I share the screen now, I'll be able to share my desktop and a lot more features like chat, for example, or waiting room can be and have to be customized through the Zoom website. 
I'm sure it, this happened to everyone where you were on mute and now it's your time to speak and you forget to unmute yourself and people are reminding you to unmute yourself. So the easiest way to solve this problem is simply to remember if you're working from the desktop is to press space when it's your time to speak. As you can see now, I'm muted. And if I simply press space and hold it, I'm now holding space and as you can see, I'm temporarily unmuted. I'll make my comment and then release space and then I'll be muted one more time. You don't have to go and click mute, unmute all the time. Just get into the habit of pressing space when it's your time to speak. You'll be temporarily unmuted. You make a comment, you release it, and then you put on mute one more time. There is a chance this feature has not been turned on in your Zoom settings, so to make sure it's on, uh, when your Zoom is open and you're not in the meeting, click on settings, go to audio, and from here, make sure that the press and hold space key to temporarily unmute yourself is on. Mistake number six has to do with waiting room feature of Zoom. It's a beautiful feature by all means, but sometimes you have a meeting and you don't want to be interrupted by the people coming in late. You just want people to come in straight. You basically know who's going to attend and you don't need to people to be in the waiting room. So the easiest way to do that is to quickly navigate to security and click on enable waiting room if it's on. If you click on it, the waiting room will be off. Sometimes it makes more sense to disable the waiting room and let people write in. Uh, sometimes when you put people in the breakout rooms, you assign some specific tasks or questions for them to discuss. But when people join their breakout room, sometimes they, well, they don't really know what they need to do. And it's, it creates this awkward moment where you are in a breakout room with a bunch of people and you're not really uh, sure uh, what you need to do. So it's a good practice to remind people the guiding questions or the tasks that they need to talk about while they're in a breakout room. And this is how you can easily do that. Once your participants join the breakout rooms, you as a host can broadcast a message to everyone. And this is what it looks like. Once I click broadcast, as a participant, I can see that uh, the host reminded us of the question that we need to discuss with our group. This feature can also be used to remind uh, participants of the time elapsed and how much time they have. Most of the participants don't know that they can ask for help. Uh, basically, when I do that and I ask for help, the host will get a notification that uh, a student uh, Zoom, this is the name of the user in breakout room, ask for help. I can now join the breakout room, facilitate the process and then leave the room to help others. Another thing some people struggle with is they don't have the application open prior to the sharing. As you can see, when I click on sharing content or share my screen, the only things that I can share with my audience are the things that are already open on my desktop. I have a Google Chrome that is open and I have system preferences. Some people struggle with sharing a video clip. They want to show a YouTube but they don't see YouTube video here. What you need to do upfront is to select the video clip that you would like to play, put it on pause, and only then go and click on share screen, and then you will be able to select the video clip that you would like to play. Mistake number nine has to do again with sharing your screen and not really knowing what you're sharing, whether the audience can see whatever you're sharing or not, which most of the time lead to questions like, hey guys, do you see my screen? What do you see? Do you see my presentation? So all these awkward questions and situations can be avoided by one single step, taking a second device and joining your meeting from this device. So imagine that I'm hosting my meeting through my laptop and I join this meeting, not as a host, but as a guest, as an attendee from my phone. In this way, I will be actually seeing what participants are seeing from their end. I'll share something and then instead of asking people whether they can see my screen or what they see, I'll glance at my phone to check whether participants see what, what I want them to see. Important step to take uh, if you are using this method is to mute the volume on your second device because if you don't do this, this is what's gonna happen. So I'm now speaking and this creates lots of echo, so make sure you turn off the volume on your second device because so that your main device will not pick up the sound coming through uh, your second device. 
Finally, it's not even a mistake, it's just a quick tip how you can streamline your Zoom experience. Most of the time when you join your meeting, Zoom will ask you whether you want to join with your computer audio and you need to click it one more time. Sometimes your camera is on and you want it off and you turn it off. Just a quick tip how you can streamline those things so when you join the meeting, you don't have to go through all these clicks and this is how you do it. Uh, before you join any meetings, go to settings click on audio and click on join audio by computer when joining a meeting. Also go to the video settings and click on turn off my video when joining a meeting. So there are lots of things you can customize in the Zoom settings before joining the meeting but these are the two that I like the most. This uh, feature looks a little bit different if you are using a mobile device. If I go to settings and to meetings auto connect my audio, use the internet. This will let you in into the Zoom meeting uh, right away. Also, if you want to keep your video off, select always turn off my video. And this way, when you join the meeting, your video will be off, but then you can turn it back and off whenever you like. What we've done today was basically looking at 10 most common mistakes that I've seen people make and ways of avoiding those mistakes and making your Zoom experience more pleasant and professional. If you have any questions about Zoom or if you've encountered other issues, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. I wanna say thank you for taking your time to check out this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time.